Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Kai and today I have for you this hand painted wisteria design. So this was actually a request, a custom request from someone who purchases my nails on Etsy. Thank you so much to her if she is watching. This is her third set of nails for me and this one was a design that she proposed. So she sent me some inspiration pictures. I will insert those here so that you can take a look at them. She'd wanted something really dainty, something hand painted with texture, and this is the design that I came up with. She also asked me to work in butterflies, and I'm really pleased with how it turns out. I hope she likes them as well. I also thought it would be a good opportunity for me to talk a little bit about how I hand mix colors together, give you some hand painting tips for when you're doing your own nail art, and just kind of talk about life and some updates that I have for you all and for this channel. So thank you so much for being here and let's get into the design. Disclaimer first, please make sure that you are always wearing your gloves if you're going to be working with gel, especially if it is not HEMA or dihema free, just to avoid any potential allergies and research the products you are going to be using. I'm starting off with three layers of the doughy nudie pink. As you can see here, I already have the nails base painted and now I'm actually going to go in with a really thick layer of top coat because the first step that I am showing you all is going to be how I apply the chrome details. So I'm using the D-Gel non-wipe, non-scratch top coat. I like this one because it is quite thick. I do want a layer that is going to be very smooth on top of these nails because I will be buffing away this top coat the surface layer at least so that it's no longer shiny and I don't want to buff into any of the color. So to get a nice thick layer, it always really helps if you have a top coat that is thicker to start with. That way it lays on nice and evenly and you won't buff into any of the color underneath. This top coat I picked up from Sweetie Nail Supply along with most of the products I used for this video. If you would like to check out any of the products, I will have them linked below in the description. I am also so happy to say that I have a discount slash affiliate code with Sweetie Nail Supply. It is Get Pressed. You can use it to get 10% off of your order and I also make a small commission fee off of that as well if you would like to purchase some products for yourself and support me at the same time. I really appreciate everyone who has ordered. Um, I have been absolutely blown away by all of the support I've received both on this channel and when it comes to using my discount code and that sort of thing. If you've been around my channel for a while, I used to do Sweetie Nail Supply haul videos just because I really liked purchasing products from them. They are a Korean Japanese gel importer and I had made a joke on one of them that like the day that I get some sort of collaboration with Sweetie Nail Supply, although I've made it. And if you haven't seen my last video, it was a PR video for their Bella B Swanky Reflective Glitter Collection that is absolutely gorgeous. I do some handmade charms using the metal technique popularized by Dreamy Little Nails last summer when she did her Sakura set. So please go check that out if you haven't watched it yet. I am super happy with how those nails turned out. Um, they're probably my favorite set yet, also one of my most intricate sets yet, so I will have that uh, linked up in the corner or down in the description. Right now, I am just layering on a little bit of a thicker layer of that top coat, just again to make sure that I'm not buffing into the base color when I buff away the shine to then apply the chrome. This right now is my go-to technique for doing chrome details. I will apply a top coat, cure it for over the amount that it says to cure it for to make sure it's nice and fully cured. Chrome tends to not stick to over cured polish. And then I will completely buff away the shine using like one of these little buffer blocks. Any fine grit file will do, but I find buffer block is just easier to work with. So you really wanna go in there and buff away all of the shine. You do not want any shiny parts left. If you have shiny parts left, there is a chance that the chrome will stick to those small parts. And one of my biggest pet peeves is chrome fallout. Some of it, I will say, can be unavoidable. You might have a couple spots here and there. In fact, in the end result of this design, there are just like a couple little glitter flakes left behind. 
um, that were just, I think, actually in the polish itself, the top coat that I used. Another tip is you always want to have a separate bottle of top coat that you use with your chrome powders. That way you're not contaminating a top coat that you used for a design that does not have any shimmer in it. But yeah, I'm just going in here, buffing away that shine completely so they're totally matte. And then I will go in and paint the design on top. So here are the nails all buffed out. You can see they have absolutely no shine to them anymore. And I'm going to use my Jinbi Crazy Top Coat, the thick kind, to do the details here, along with my Leaf Gel Liner Brush. This is a long one. I really love this Leaf Gel Brush. It is really great for doing super tiny detailed chrome work because it's just so incredibly thin. It is also long enough to do like really nice straight lines. I find it's much easier for me personally to do lines at least straight ones with a longer liner brush and then to do like smaller more rounded details with a shorter liner brush that is just my personal preference the longer the brushes i would say the smoother the line's going to be the shorter the more sort of like jagged edges and round details you can get out of it so i'm painting on the chrome first because this customer had wanted the painted wisteria to have more of like a, a 3d effect so the chrome is actually going to be underneath the wisteria and i i don't really know what i was trying to emulate here i guess i was going for like when you see hanging flowers i often think of like strands of fairy lights hanging with them so i was doing these little lines and swoops to kind of emulate the look of like some sort of golden garland or fairy lights that are hanging amidst the flowers. And then for the middle finger here, I wanted to do kind of like a little wreath of the wisteria. I actually love wisteria so much. I've always Flower been a huge fan. I grew up in Alaska. In, in Alaska, we have a lot of really pretty foliage, really pretty flowers, but I missed out on having some of the like more tropical flowers that are available both in the wild and in gardens in like the lower 48s. So now that I live in Florida, I get to see wisteria all the time in the summer. They are a beautiful flower. There is a really nice park in Orlando that has these swinging benches and some trellises with wisteria growing on top. And in probably like May, I would say, they're in full bloom and they're just the most pretty thing so i was more than happy to do this set because wisteria are one of my favorite flowers for sure i love any sort of plants that are like a, a hanging vine anything that droops a willow is one of my favorite trees i just really like the look so here i'm going in with the nail bio gold chrome powder this one is also from sweetie nail supply i really like the color i am trying to figure out the best sort of clear gel to use this on because i did notice with the jinbi crazy thick it wasn't as bold as i wanted like there are some spots that didn't get covered by the chrome powder and i only cured the jinbi crazy thick for 30 seconds which tends to help chrome stick the shorter the cure time you usually want to do maybe like half of the time suggested for the product in order to apply the chrome another trick is you can kind of like wipe it down a little bit with alcohol and that will help the chrome stick better but even doing both those things i was still noticing a little bit of um areas where the chrome didn't fully stick so if you have any suggestions for your favorite sort of ear gel to apply chrome to please leave them in the comments down below i would love to test them out speaking of testing out things here i am just going in with a blender brush this is like an ombre brush and i wanted to do kind of an abstract paint stroke to match the hand nature of these nails so i'm just going in with that brush laying down like a, a stroke of the clear gel with a, a jagged edge i wanted it to feel very like feathered out so i'm applying that and curing it for 30 seconds and then rubbing in that chrome powder for larger areas, I will use the little like doe foot applicator that comes with the chrome powder. 
And then for smaller areas, I like to use the little silicone tools. I just find I get a little bit more control that way. And then wipe away the extra. I'm just using one of those triangular makeup sponges. That has always worked the best for me in terms of wiping away the excess. So the next step is to hand paint wisteria flowers. I'm going to use my degel paints mixed with a little bit of the Madame Glam white embossing gel because it is non-wipe. The degel paints, I wouldn't say are completely non-wipe. They're not super tacky, but I ended up mixing them again with the Madame Glam 3D non-wipe embossing gel. And then later on, I mix them with a little bit of acrylic powder for some extra texture. And that really took away any sort of inhibition layer, but on their own, they're not like marketed as non-wipe, so I wouldn't rely on them being non-wipe. But they are this really wonderful thick consistency that is perfect for painting details. They are super pigmented, which is really important if you're going to be painting really complex character art or anything like that, because you don't want to go over it again with another layer and blur your lines. I personally really like the packaging of these. Um, they have that little like silicone cap on the inside that's meant to stop them from becoming a mess. Like if you compare the degel paints to my Madame Glam paint pot here, the Madame Glam one is getting a little bit messy, um, especially around the edges, just because when you dip a brush in, you really want to wipe away extra on the edge. And the degel one has that nice like silicone cover that you can clean off easily. I know that it's going to keep the paints nice and protected, not that it will necessarily dry out with air, but I have noticed that some of my gels do tend to get a little stiffer with time. I don't know if that's air exposure or what, but it's not exactly that they're curing, it's just that they're drying out. So I am a fan of the silicone cover. Um, I know some people aren't because it does get a little bit messy if you're not careful. You do definitely have to be a little bit careful with how you're putting these away but i like that um i tend to actually just scrape most of my paint off of the little silicone cover when i use it because when i tell you a little goes a long way with these gels a little goes a long way i'm just showing you here how i open and close them i just get a nice tight seal on one edge and then push down the other wipe away any mess that i've made and it is good to go this was part of a packaged set. I will have that linked below, but you can also buy them individually. So here I'm mixing up the purple and the white to have a mid-toned purple. I wanted the wisterias to not be like one tone completely. I wanted them to have some dimension, some depth. I wanted to go from like a darker purple to a lighter purple as the flowers bloomed up towards the top of the bunch. Here I'm mixing up a perfect leaf color. So I mixed the brown with the green because the green itself was really vibrant and I wanted a more toned down leaf color. If you are trying to tone down a color, the best way to do so is by taking a color that is opposite of it on the color wheel. So instead of using red, I'm using a brown, which is still like a warm toned, almost reddish color. I didn't want to tone down the green too, too much, so I'm just using a little bit of that brown, but as you can see here, it just doles out that green. And this actually works for any color. So red and green are opposites, blue and orange are opposites, and then purple and yellow. And if you ever want to tone down a color, you want to grab a teeny tiny bit of a color opposite of it on the color wheel, mix it in, and it will take away a bit of that color vibrancy. I find this especially useful for when you want to do art that is rooted more in realism and emulating real life colors because a lot of times colors in their pure form are not necessarily seen in nature. Often things that exist in the world are a little bit more muted. So here I am just hand painting the butterfly nail first. So this is the pinky. I am kind of basing it off of this design and spell here, albeit this one is a little bit more simple. I was just going for the hand painted look with a little bit of the chrome design. I really liked the way that this butterfly was kind of skewed to the side. I thought it fit the nail really well and it fills up the space without looking too symmetrical. The nice thing about asymmetrical designs is also that they are much more forgiving. If you try to paint something symmetrical, you have to make sure both sides look even, otherwise it is going to look off. 
So next up, I'm using my Diami short liner brush. This is another favorite of mine just because it is so, so skinny. And I'm going to be painting the Wisteria Blossoms. I'm starting with the darkest color at the bottom. You can kind of think of these as like the buds that haven't fully opened yet, so they are darker in color. And I'm using that straight purple and dipping my brush into a little bit of the lighter purple to get a nice like blended blossom so that it's not all one tone of the color and you get some dimension there. And as I work my way up the stem or up the, the branch, I suppose, of wisteria flowers, I'm just going to get gradually lighter and lighter. And I'm making these like little teardrop shapes almost with the skinnier side in towards the center of the flower bunch. So while I'm painting these, I just wanted to give a little bit of like a life update, um, some awesome news. I live in a house with my boyfriend and we ended up having an open room. Um, one of our roommates moved out and so I have now moved into kind of like a nail studio. So we turned the empty room into an office space where both of our computers are and all of my nail stuff. I do really want to do a tour at some point. We are still working on finalizing the room. I'm still working on kind of organizing all of my nail things. And I have some videos that I have to film here for a PR. But after all of that is done, I really do want to do a nail tour, a nail room tour and show you all kind of like how I've organized my space. Not a lot is going to be changing for you all here in terms of what you see in videos. I just behind the scenes will have a dedicated space to work that is not where I sleep as well, which means I feel more productive. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but if any of you work from home, I think you'll understand what I mean by it being important to have a space that is not your bedroom where you can work. I personally just find it makes me feel so much more productive when I have a space dedicated to working. It helps put me in the right sort of mindset and gets the creativity and productivity flowing much better, at least for me. So I'm really excited to have the space to show it off once it is finished. The only thing that will change is my audio setup. I did get a new mic. Um, my boyfriend actually bought it for me for my birthday. Uh, I am using it for this video. I haven't fully worked out the kinks though, I think of like messing with the mixing and editing my voice. So sorry if I sound a little bit off. Um, I am again trying to figure out the best way to mix the vocals for it. So over the next couple videos, there may be some audio issues. I apologize and I do appreciate your patience. I'm trying to figure out the best way to like cut out background noises while still getting my voice to come through. So just to pause on the life updates, I wanted to show you how I load a brush. So one thing that's really important when you're using these paints because they are thicker is keeping like a nice clean brush tip. I just use a palette and kind of wipe off any excess to get a nice tip again if I'm finding that my brush is getting too overpacked with product and then I can go back in, dip into whatever color that I want because if your brush is too overloaded with paint, you won't get the small finer details that you want. You want the tip of your brush to be no bigger than the smallest detail that you're painting. In this case, I am kind of like lumping the paint on the very tip because I do want that rounded flower, that rounded blossom. But if you're going for like a really skinny line, you wanna make sure that you're not overloading your brush with paint. Otherwise, when you start to lay down that line, you're gonna get a big glob at the end. So that's my biggest tip for hand painting is make sure that you're paying attention to how much of the product is actually on your brush and that it's not all dripping down to the end of the brush. If it is dripping down to the end, you're not gonna get a nice clean line, a nice fine detail. So make sure that you are wiping off any of the excess as you need to. So the next big update that I wanted to talk about, I already kind of touched on, but I was super fortunate and super happy to have been reached out to by Sweetie Nail Supply, which is that Korean Japanese gel importer brand. 
they are out of Canada and they had sent me some products to try and gave me an affiliate code to share with all of you. And I am super excited to share that I will be doing another review slash PR video with them. So they have sent me the Muse Ink collection, the new Juicy Pop one, and the Topaz version. So the Muse is a brand by Favory. They are, I believe, a Japanese company because they produce their products out of Tokyo, but they are well known for their art inks so these are not your traditional polish they are a much thinner consistency and you can do a lot of really cool like watercolored marbly looks with them i have two design ideas in mind one is to do like a a really watery looking jellyfish design and the other is to do a really fun like picnic set i've seen people use the art inks to do like plaid designs and on top of that to do some fun like 3D picnic-y foods. So those are the two thoughts I had. A jellyfish design with a lot of like watery marble techniques or a picnic design using the inks to create like a plaid design and using them to color some 3D gel and do some little 3D foods. Let me know which one you think you would want to see. I'm kind of in between the ideas at the moment. I think I might be leaning towards the picnic look just because I love doing 3D. I like hand sculpting things. I think it's a lot of fun. And I've been really wanting to try mixing my art inks into a 3D gel to get a colored 3D gel. This idea was sent to me by hope from nails box of hope i will put her channel in the description she does amazing japanese korean inspired nails with a lot of really nice layering and dimension to the colors and the different kinds of gels she is so if you're looking for more awesome nail art definitely go check out her channel but yeah, I am really excited to test out the inks. I haven't worked with inks a lot. Um, it's not something that I've had the pleasure of buying before. So huge, huge thank you to Sweetie Nail Supply for offering to send them to me. I'm really excited to do a design with them. I haven't unpacked them yet just because I have some other obligations to get through. But once I do, it will probably be in the next few videos that I use them. But We'll see. Definitely let me know what type of design you're leaning towards. Is it the jellyfish design or is it the like picnic with 3D foods? I may end up doing both, so we will see. I'm just really happy with the way that things are going right now with my nail art journey. Um, the room has really reinvigorated me. I'm feeling very inspired with a new space to work in. I don't really like talking a ton about my achievements. I'm always really excited when they happen, but I always feel kind of weird like voicing them and talking about them with you all. But um, I am super happy that I have been able to work with Sweetie Nail Supply. Again, I love the products that they sell. Uh, I do work on a teacher salary, so I do not really make a ton of money and being able to do some PR for them, having the affiliate code is allowing me to try out some more nail stuff, which I hope is in turn helping you all when I do reviews and show off products in case you were looking for like real swatches of things before you buy them. I actually really got into nail YouTube when I first started watching other people do nails because I was looking for reviews of different products, of different polishes that were pricier and I didn't want to like jump right into buying them without seeing somebody use them in real time and use them in a design so i found people like evie from long hair pretty nails and emily susanna because they did product reviews and things like that so i'm super happy that i can kind of like maybe do the same for you and help you out if you are looking for certain products and swatches so again i hate kind of like talking about my achievements but I am always really grateful, um, really happy that I can work with companies like that. I actually sent them a picture of the nails that I did for my last set. And I was like, hey, you know, just in case, you're welcome to use this wherever you want. And 
I honestly, I was so shocked. Um, I didn't cry, but I definitely like had to take a moment. Um, they put it on their website. So the nails that I did for the Bella B Swinky collection are actually up as like one of the product photos on their website. Again, I feel really kind of weird talking about it, honestly, but I am super proud of that and and super happy just kind of with like how my nail art journey is going right now. And I really appreciate all of you being here with me. I started this channel because I wanted to share my experience with nails in hopes that it would help some of you, but also because I don't really know a lot of people in my personal life that do nails and I wanted to find some like-minded people to talk to. So I am super glad that I can say I definitely have. I've made some great friends here on YouTube that I like to chat with about different nail ideas and whatnot. Um, so I'm just, I'm super thankful for all of the support. I absolutely love reading all of your comments. I really try to respond to all of them, if not right away in at least a timely manner. And I hope to be able to keep that up. I know once school starts again, I'm a teacher. I won't have quite as much time, but for now, in the summer, I'm really enjoying discussing things with you all in the comments. So please, if you ever have anything you want to talk about related to a video, related to a product I use, please do not hesitate to comment down below. I love talking with you all. It is one of the reasons I started this channel in the first place, to be able to speak with like-minded nail lovers. So. Thank you all so much. Um, I, I can't really express how appreciative I am of all of the support on my channel. I just hit 2000 subscribers, which is crazy to me actually that so many people care about my nail art and what I'm doing. And I'm just humbled every day um, and really, really happy to be doing what I'm doing. Um, I love my job, my career, but I also really love nail art and I'm just really pleased with how things are going right now. So thank you. I, I really can't say it enough. Not in this video, but probably in my next one or I might upload like a little short. I'm not sure yet. I do want to do a giveaway. Actually, I want to do a couple giveaways. I have like a ton of products that I don't really use and don't necessarily see myself using it's stuff that i kind of like discovered or rediscovered on the move to my new nail room and i would like to give them away to somebody who's maybe starting their nail journey who doesn't have a lot of things to use um and who wouldn't mind things that have been gently used like a lot of them are polishes that i've opened maybe once and just never got around to using there's nothing wrong with them and they still have, you know, a good year or two left before they expire. I just, I hate wasting things too much. So I do want to do a giveaway for that kind of stuff. And then I also want to buy some product for like an official giveaway for 2000 subscribers. So I will update you all on those soon. Again, I have a lot of like PR things to do um, here really soon. The move of the room has taken quite a bit of time for me in the last couple weeks. So I haven't exactly been as productive as I wanted to be with nails and videos, but that's okay. I'm still really happy with where things are right now. Can't thank you guys enough. So be on the lookout for those giveaways. Right now, I am just putting on a layer of top coat. I'm making sure it's nice and thick over those chrome designs. You really want a thick layer of top coat over the chrome before going in and smoothing it out. That way you're not dragging the brush through those chrome details. That can cause some of the powder to lift and pull away with the brush. So I always go in thick to start with and then smooth out the extra. But I am top coating everything, making sure to really get around those charms nice and well so that they're not sticking out too much i hate when a charm is not fully sealed in i personally like to seal in my charms as much as possible just because when things snag it is my biggest pet peeve so i am top coating all of this because the very last step will be to put on kind of like the 3d painted texture 
over the flowers. So to get that 3D look, I'm actually just gonna take some clear acrylic powder and I'm going to mix that in with the purple colors. This will add body to the paint and give you that really nice paint texture, almost as if it were like an acrylic or an oil paint on canvas. That was kind of the look I was going for. So you wanna mix this into your paint really well. I would start with less first and add more powder as needed. That way you're not wasting paint by putting too much powder in and needing to add more of the colored paint. So I always start with less is more because you can always add extra acrylic powder as needed. Here I'm just using my little palette knife to mix these up nice and well. You want it to get to a point where you can see some of that powder texture, but to where it's not like too dry to work with. So a little bit at a time, I got this little scoop off of Timu. I will try to remember to link it below because it is so handy for scooping out like acrylic powders or for scooping out glitters to make custom glitter polishes. I love it. I also love this palette knife. This is just like a painting palette knife from I think Amazon, something like that. Just a, just a little metal one. But I find it's the easiest to work with for mixing colors together. And then once you have those paints in the consistency that you want them, I am just going over some of those wisteria blossoms, but not all of them. So by going over some of the blossoms, it actually helps to add depth too. It makes it look like the ones that are 3D, the ones that have this acrylic mixture over them are in the foreground. Whereas the ones that are not 3D, that are flattened, look like they're kind of like behind those blossoms. And I think it helps it give the flowers even more of a full look, a full appearance, as if it's a really nice, healthy branch of wisteria. Here I'm keeping with that same theme of using the lighter colors at the top and then working your way down to a darker color. You also can mix together like the lighter color with a little dot of the darker color. That's going to help create that really nice blended look. Here it's okay for your polish to be a little bit chunkier because you're not going for like really tiny smooth lines. I am really just kind of globbing this on over the blossoms because I wanted it to have that like 3D effect. The set, even though on the surface it looks pretty simple, um, I hate to say that it did take me like probably five hours to finish. Um, I always, always underestimate how long a set is going to take me until I really get in and do it. Most of the time it's because if I'm designing something for the first time, I usually have an idea in my head. I put it on paper or in this case on nails and I don't really like initial look so there's a lot of trial and error that happens when i'm designing i'll usually do a nail i'll not like it redo it one two maybe even three times and so something like this tends to take me a while when it's a new design and here there was just a lot of layering going on with the hand painted flowers and the chrome and the 3d details so yeah even though on the surface i think it looks like a, a maybe a simpler set um it still took me like five hours to do but i am really happy with the results overall i love the texture i'm a big fan of textured nails i just really like how it adds dimension to have like 3d charms or even like embossing gel over the top of some of the details here i'm adding some 3d texture to those butterflies I'm just going over the top set of wings with the lighter purple and then using the darker purple to get the lower set of wings. Again, I'm not completely covering the wing, just starting from the center and kind of feathering that paint outward just to give it, again, a little bit more dimension. Love me a 3D texture so much. And I'm really pleased overall with how these nails turned out. I really hope the customer is as well. It was a fun set to work on. If you all would like to order a set from me from my Etsy, it will be linked below. I do take custom requests as well if you would like to shoot me a message. So here is the finished look. I am super pleased with how everything turned out. 
I love the design and I'm excited to do more hand painting with my D-gels. I thought they performed wonderfully, very pigmented. They gave me nice control because of how thick they were. I just want to say thank you so much again to everybody who has been here with me on this nail journey. I cannot believe that I am at 2,000 subscribers. That is absolutely wild to me. Um, I just, I, I get kind of embarrassed about it sometimes, honestly, thinking that like, oh my gosh, um, all these people are listening to me ramble on in these videos. This one especially was like very rambly. There's a lot going on that I just wanted to share. Um, so hopefully it made some sense. Hopefully you learned some things about painting, about color theory. Let me know which of the designs you're leaning towards for the inks. Is it the picnic look or the jellyfish look? And I will see you all in the next one. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. Bye.